what ones would you categorize as like starter ones where people are looking at you know a little bit less risk and less income we mentioned one obviously um you know, healthcare medical but yeah, I'd um, like if you're starting out, I'd be looking at those, you know, industrial or like sort of, um, I mean, mixed use in, in a way or where you can basically have multiple tenancies in, in one complex. So that's a good way to de-risk it mm, because uh, you've got, you know, um, you want to have three tenants on on one split time. up. Yeah, yeah. So if one vacates, then your cash flow is not, you know. Or like fully just stopped on that day. Yeah, and you know, we've got the other two tenants paying your an income, so that's a good way to de-risk it. Industrial- Diversi- diversification was the word I was thinking about. They couldn't get out all the time. <laughs> yes, good. Uh, but yeah, really good question. So like industrials in favour at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more so just making sure you're not overpaying on that front. Uh, the office. Uh, there is a little bit of a um, surge back in the office market at the moment, but you know, during COVID, because everyone was basically work from home, mm-hmm. that office market just tanked, you know, and like no one saw that coming. No. Um, so that, same with hotels and motels, no one saw that coming. Yeah, and, and that's the risk too. Is like, mm-hmm. like there's always risk in investing. Um, it's just making those calculated risks and. Uh, having these hard conversations up front to say, mm-hmm. well, can you carry this if this happens? Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest thing that I'll talk about with people if they are thinking commercial after their residential is, mm-hmm. look, this might be vacant for three to six months and then you might have to offer a three-month you know, letting up period. So there could be like no cash flow coming through for nine months. How would that actually feel? And then it's like, oh, no, that'd be the worst thing in the world. But then you go, there's a tenant here you know, there's a five-year lease. The business is solid. You're buying it in. They've got four years left of that, that lease, and the cash flow after all, all expenses is forty thousand dollars in your back pocket. Yeah. You sit there and go, "Do you want that?" And the answer forty thousand dollars a year, roughly. Yeah. 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 And you're like, "Well, the cash flow is great. There's opportunity there. You know, there is those black swan events that come through. No one actually knows them. But if you live your life in fear, then you'll you're not." You're not going to go, out, go down that path, and you should probably should stick to that more residential um, aspect of it. Or yeah, even if you do are a little bit skeptical still, like oh, I hope like no, no, my tenant doesn't leave me. After a year, you've got forty grand cash. Don't go and spend it on you know cars and jet skis. Put it in a, a you know a linked account against the mortgage or the finance on that property for a rainy day, and yeah. have that as a, a bit of a war chest. It's it's gonna. It's really good for sleep at night factor versus all being very like you know go away and okay, I'm earning all this money. I'm earning five grand a month. Let's go and buy yeah, buy boat, buy stuff. You know, like yeah. it's you. Yeah, yeah. You really want to be focusing on that. Yeah, you de-risk as much as possible. So building up that cash flow buffer. Just so if there was a nine month layup period and you had hundred k in your offset facility, then mm-hmm. you can ride that out. So if that you know, worst case scenario happens. It's, it's just planning up front to say, you know, you've got those things in place. Like you should never buy any property with every single dollar that you have. Yeah. Or you should. I don't think you should do that with anything you've got. Really, it's you. Like, what happens if you have a car crash and you need to, you know, pay for medical expenses that mm. were unforeseen? Like, you just, it's, it's, it's a scary thing. Yeah. Some people get sold, and the ego gets in place. And, yeah. Um, you know, they push it to the limits, and they're the ones that um, unfortunately have those negative stories. But yeah, you know, properties it's a pretty simple process. It is scarcity. If you're buying in the right locations, you, know, you get that capital growth. And with, with cash flow too from commercial, it helps you pay down that debt faster. I mean, generally, if you can find a commercial property that's yielding around that 7%, if you utilize all that cash that you're receiving from it to pay down that debt, you can pay down that debt within that 10 year time frame. Mm-hmm. And then you can go and enjoy it, you know. Yeah, like it's exactly. like you got a debt-free asset that's just sending out cash to you every single month. It's fantastic. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty big thing that you just mentioned there, and I want to really emphasize it that, like, guys, it's an average thing to do. If you buy a commercial property, on average, you can pay it off in ten years. Yeah, it's not like a thirty-year mortgage for a property that you own. Like, it can be done. You could. Maybe even pay it off fast. Depends on if you want to cash inject into it as well. So it's definitely, you know, when you think about it, if you're buying a, a million dollar 
uh, let's just use round figures, million dollars, and you're getting you know fifty grand a year in net income mm-hmm. from that, and you pay that up over to ten years. It's very achievable too, and it's which is very achievable. Uh, then after ten years, you know that property is going to grow in value and capital growth because it's it's not like what most people are saying is like you know capital you don't get capital growth in commercial. You do, depending on the locations, of course. Mm. Uh, and then you know once you pay that off in ten years, you're gonna have more than a fifty k wage without any debt, right? You can have a lot more. Yeah. So if you risk of calculator, if you get one point five, say it goes up to one point five million dollars, that's only a which is pretty conservative. On a 5% yield, that's 75 grand. It's probably should be on that in my head, but anyway. 